Hi guys, it's Carissa, and as many of you know, I have been excited about building a book collection for our daughter that we're expecting in December. And books were so important to me as a child. Mike, not so much. He kind of laughs and jokes that his parents just let him play with rocks, but <laughs> I really always wanted to make sure I had a really nice large book collection for my children if I was ever able to have them. And I recently found some of my old childhood books, not many, but some, and I've been purchasing a few here and there. I've since tried to stop and add some to my registry as I think of them um, that I would like because I'm hoping to add to the invitation to have books brought in, in place of cards. So the books will be signed and then that will always be a part of the book um, and make it even, even more special gifts. So when Mike and I were cleaning out the basement recently in preparation to put some things into the basement, I found a bunch of my books that I had kept um, from my childhood. And the first one I'm going to show you is my baby book. First of all, how 1982 is that? There is a wood grain punched label for my name on the front the book but savvy eagle-eyed viewers may notice that that is not actually my name it's because when I was born my mother spelled my name with two S's and then was worried people would call me Carissa so she changed it and took one of the S's out this is a very old-fashioned baby book because it covers a lot of material the one that I chose for our daughter is very very simple just because I feel overwhelmed by the thought of this and I can even tell my mom almost did too because there's a passage here um, that's written it's like dreams for our baby but I can see that she wrote it in pencil first because she was worried about you know she wanted to make sure she got it just right and I think that's so sweet here are my hospital bracelets this is really special to me because it says that my favorite lullaby was this song. I've told you guys about this before in a really old video about myself. It might have been like my Q&A video on my other channel, but it is the um, theme song to a television show that used to be on Nickelodeon when I was little. I think it was just called Emily. I'm not sure. But it was about a little French girl named Emily and she had a pet hedgehog named Humphrey and that's why I named my hedgehog Humphrey and that's why I've kind of always had a love for hedgehogs is because my mother used to sing this song to me when I was little. Um, and if I can find that intro, I'll link it below so you can so you can watch it. And my other favorite thing that's inside this book, it's tucked in. <laughs> my sister and I used to pull this out and laugh about it. It's so sweet, it's for my Aunt Madge and I love her so, so, so much. And I know that this card probably, you know, like back then it was really cute, but seeing it now, it just seems really creepy. <laughs> So it's really cute, but I, I don't know. You're with me on that, right? The other books from my childhood here, I have this book called Jim Jump. I mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, my mom claims that this was my absolute favorite book for the longest time, and I do. I feel like I remember it and almost know it by heart still to this day, um, just from the memory of her reading it to me so much. But it's about a little pony who, I think he claims he can jump over anything, and the other farm animals doubt him. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's very sweet. It's really, really old. I think it's from the 50s. I bought this copy on eBay a long time ago because I used to purchase these, this book as a gift with um, other registry gifts for moms to be. But I think when this one showed up, it was a little too tattered looking for my liking, so I kept it. I had forgotten about that, of course, and already purchased myself a new copy. And this one looks almost completely brand new and it's in the wrapper I got this on eBay so um, I have two copies I guess I'll just maybe one will be an upstairs and one will be a downstairs copy I don't know this is a staple of course this is goodnight moon this isn't my childhood copy this is a gift that was given to me by a friend in college um, it had a special meaning to us and she gave this to me then and I still have it. It's in really good condition, so I don't need to get a copy of this. This is The Giving Tree. And someone purchased this for my mother as a gift, actually, I think. Um, and somehow I ended up with it. I have no idea. I guess I stole it. I don't know. <laughs> so um, 
so this is a wonderful book. This is one of those ones that I don't know if I'll get through. I'll probably cry, so I don't think I'll read it very often, but it's a really special book to have. This book was also a gift. This was from a friend of mine from high school, and she was also in my wedding. Um, I think we were at a bookstore looking at books, and we, were, we read this one, and it had us crying with laughter because it was basically <laughs> a story about a little baby and his bunny friend and they're just super happy friends and everything's wonderful. They laugh and play with bubbles and they put necklaces on together. <laughs> and for some reason it takes this awful turn where it says that the bunny chases a ball and hops away and the, <laughs> and the baby starts crying. And we thought that was <laughs> funny. It was like sick, twisted funny, I guess. Not that we were happy or laughing that the baby was crying, but it was like, whoa, this was really sweet and it had to get like this. Um, and we laughed and laughed and she ended up buying it for me as a gift. So I have that. This is extra special to me because I think that this was a gift from my grandfather. He used to give us secondhand items a lot and he was a Jehovah's Witness and um, none of the rest of our family is but he practiced on his own and um, he was unable to celebrate holidays with us or give us gifts. I think he only gave me three gifts the entire time he was alive um, during my lifetime. And two of them were pairs of earrings that he purchased when he went away on a trip. So his way around that, I think, was to find items um, that were previously owned and either fix them up for us like bicycles or books and I got to see so many different kinds of books as a result of that and this is one of my favorites from that time period as you can tell it's well loved and I'm pretty sure I'm the one who ripped it not the previous owner um, just because I'm pretty hard on my books and dust jackets don't don't do well in my life even to this day but this is now we are six by A.A. A. Milne and of course that is the um, author of the Winnie the Pooh series I don't know why but of all of the books by A.A. Milne. This was my favorite one. There must have just been something about the writing in this one because I don't have any of the others and I remember there being others. My favorite poem in this book, I'm trying to find it because I can't remember the exact name. Oh, here it is. It's called Forgiven and it's about a beetle. Um, I love, love, love this poem and if I can find a link for it, I'll put it below. Otherwise, I'll just type it out because it's not, it's only like a page and a half. This is a book for older children, obviously, but I'm not shying away from that either. Um, I still want to have a big collection and I would have wanted this anyway, so I'm excited to still have that. Speaking of books for older children, this is Persnickety. This is from the Serendipity series. Um, I loved these when I was in like grade school and this is the only one I have. I had a bunch of them, but somehow this is the only one that I still have, and I don't know how that came to be. This certainly was not my favorite of all of the books, um, and I'm hoping I can maybe find like a compilation or like a collection of these because there's so many of them. In fact, yeah, I think there's a list in the back of the book. There's this big long list here. So um, I'm happy to have that though because this is definitely, this was one of the actual books I had when I was a kid. This here was a gift from um, a coworker of Mike's. He and his wife have, have a daughter, but she's older now, so the, she's outgrown these, um, and they're having a baby boy. So they had actually given us a few things very generously for us to have, and this book set was one of them. Now, I warn you, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I'm not big on the Disney princess thing. I'm not against it. I'm not one of those types who's going to say there's some sort of social or societal issue with the Disney princess thing, but I don't know. I just, I just don't like... My favorite Disney movies don't have a princess. Um, growing up, I loved The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. Loved them. And I would strangle my current self for even saying that. But truly, my favorite Disney movies are Lilo and Stitch. That's probably my absolute favorite and um, The Emperor's New Groove, which I didn't think I'd even like, and I love that movie, it's so good. And um, on Robin Hood, oh, I tried to watch that recently and I cried through it, but, so I don't have anything against the Disney princesses, but I haven't purchased anything yet 
um, Disney princess related. And it's funny because Mike sometimes will, th he says it a lot when we're out in the stores. He's like, I wonder what our child will be in into, like what her favorite stuff will be. And he's so curious. And there's a really good chance it's going to be this. So it's exciting to have this because this is nothing that I would just instinctually go for on my own. It is a board book collection. And I think each princess gets their, gets two books. I'm not sure. So they're these cute little tiny chunky books. And just to show you, for example, they're super short too. Um, this is this one's called Under the Sea. This is a Little Mermaid one, and they have very short passages on them, and little um, images actually from the movie. So I think that's great. I did want to be an animator for Disney when I was growing up. Um, but then things went digital and I was not good at that. So, okay, on to the books that I have purchased. Um, I, we have received books as gifts, which is so awesome. And I have included most of those in my either weekly updates or the gift videos that I've started making just, just because I like to really be able to take my time when I talk about those things um, and showcase the item and say my appropriate thank yous. So those books will not be part of this video. These here are just ones that I've purchased. These two though were suggestions from my friend Lisa, um, Lisa Marie TTC. This one was one of my favorites as a child. And I'm, I'm so excited that it's still around. I don't know why I would have assumed that this was not something that you could easily get your hands on. But this is the monster at the end of this book. Grover was my favorite when I was little. I did watch a lot of Sesame Street and Grover was my favorite. I was pre-Elmo days, so I almost wonder how I would have felt about Elmo. But this book used to scare the crap out of me. <laughs> I liked it. I knew the ending, but it still really freaked me out. So it's really cute and it's really fun. And I don't know what it is, but I think sometimes kids do like things that scare them a little bit. At least I did when it came to this. And then there's this book. And Lisa, you freaking jerk. So she suggested this to me, and I've seen this book all over the place. I feel like I've seen it at Target and at every single store that sells books for children. Um, and I feel like I've even heard people mention that they love this book, but I, I don't know, I, it wasn't on my radar. This book, <sighs> um, so she said that I should get it, and I hadn't read it, but I just purchased it. Got it for a good price on Amazon. And I was good until like three quarters of the way through. And then this book just socks you right in the heart. It's just... It's wonderful though. It's really good. Um, I don't know who's going to read this to my child though. Because I don't I sure as heck don't think it's going to be me. Um, I can't even talk about it without it getting to me. So... Two other books that I ordered that aren't here yet, but I wanted to just get this video done because my the collection was getting kind of big, were also books from my childhood that I think my grandfather had picked up somewhere. One of them is, I think it's called Henry's Horrible Mistake, I believe. Um, I found that super cheap on Amazon. I think I paid a penny for it and paid like three bucks for shipping. So I got that really cheap. And then the other one I remember loving, mostly just because of the illustrations and the artwork. Turns out it's a really difficult book to find. Not so much that it's difficult to find, but it's expensive when you do find it because there aren't as many copies available. It's not still in print. Um, I think it's from like the 40s and it's the man who didn't wash his dishes. <laughs> and um, I, my, I remember my grandmother reading that one to us a lot and I just, I loved the artwork and the concept of it. It seemed really silly. But I found it for a, a reasonable price. I think I paid like $9 for it, which is kind of a lot, but hopefully it's in decent condition um, and hopefully our little girl enjoys it as much as I did. These two books I found at Marshall's. Um, I forgot what I went there for. I think I was looking for a picture frame or something and I didn't do so well, but I found these books and I love them. I love that they're sort of small, chunky board books. They have this embossing on the front so they just feel nice to hold. This one's Little Red Barn and this one is Baby's Love First Words. They were both $5.99 and these are really, I feel like they're very high quality uh, flat books. So, and what kid doesn't love a good flat book? And I think that they're going to be hopefully very well loved. 
They're by Cottage Door Press. I'll have to look and see if they have more because I don't know, there's something very appealing about these to me. Just the way they look and feel and how well made they are. The next three here are Marshall's finds as well. This one, I believe one of you guys suggested to me and um, I, it comes up a lot on book lists for children, like the top books. I think the thing that made me notice it and like it, other than the fact that there's animals, is that it's called Little Blue Truck. And um, when I met Mike and first started dating Mike, he had a blue truck with a cow print seat cover on the bench seat in the front. And it was very iconic. It was like, you know, everybody knew that truck at school. And um, so that kind of had a special place in my heart and I thought he would like that. And he's always had a truck of some kind. He has a truck. He has two trucks right now, so I thought he would enjoy this, and I think, you know, I read it a little bit in the store, and it's basically a story about teamwork um, with these animals in this truck and a big mud puddle, and I thought that was a really good story, and I totally get why people love this book. Also, look at the little frog driving it. <laughs> this was damaged, but it was only $3, and let's face it, these books are going to get damaged. So this is a Peter Rabbit 123 book and it has a little dent in the front there, a little tear, but that allowed it to be marked down, I suppose. I did love Beatrix Potter as a child, um, even though some of it was kind of creepy to me, I don't know why. But I also really love this because it's a counting book. So you have the number, the um, quantity up here in dots different colors and then there's always a different amount of animals for the number and the actual animals that are in it it was kind of funny because it felt like oh that's those are animals that I would really like like there's three kittens four guinea pigs I used to have a guinea pig five bees you guys know I love bees six squirrels I love squirrels nine hens oh gosh could you imagine nine hens ten mice and then at the end, there's this pull tab, which is surely going to just get ripped out. I'm sure <laughs> I'll have to be careful about that, but it's kind of cool because it goes through all of the numbers like this, kind of fans through them. So I thought that was a really great book, especially for three bucks. Speaking of Beatrix Potter, this was also a clearance book at Marshall's. This is only $4. And this is a beautiful Jemima Puddle Duck book. And I remember this story very well from when I was a child. And I just, I love the um, illustrations. I think they really are, they really speak to me almost more than the stories even do. And I thought this book was beautiful. My mother used to take board books like this, like really big, pretty ones that had sort of a shape to them. And she used to sort of set them out on an end table. She had one that was shaped like a Christmas tree she used to do that with. So I thought that this would be pretty and I could do that with this book sometimes too. Of all the things I loved from my childhood, and I know that some of you brought this up, and this was this was a no-brainer. I needed this. The Adventures of Frog and Toad. My sister and I loved these, and we used to get, they used to be individual books, um, and now you can buy them all together in one. We used to rent these from the library and bring them home, and my mom would read them to us, and we would laugh, because they were, they were so funny. Um, and there was something about how cute and like just angry and crotchety one of them was. I don't remember. I don't remember if it was frog or toad, but one of them was always kind of grumpy. <laughs> and we just love this. And of course, Mike loves frogs and toads. They're, I mean, turtles are his favorite, but Mike loves amphibians. So <laughs> this book was $7.98. That looks like a Barnes and Noble sticker. Did I go there or something? I don't remember where I got this, but um, I saw it in my travels recently and I had to pick it up because this is a must-have. This book will probably be, you know, one we wait to read. We won't necessarily read this one right away, very, as, at least not that often, but glad I have that. This is actually a book that was just recently released by an artist that I really love that I found on Instagram. And she does portraits, but it's mostly pet portraits, and um, it's mostly dog portraits. So her Instagram name is Blush and Honey Paper, I believe. 
This is her business name. Her name is Lauren Hitchcock and this book is D is for dog. So it is different breeds of dogs from A to Z. Sadly, the S is not Shih Tzu. That was the first thing Mike checked. I was so excited when I found out that she had released a book and I just wanted to support her and I love her artwork style. She has this sort of free form and fun style to her painting. And it would almost even be funny to see how she would, um, how she would depict Bowser and Lucy, you know? But it has all the different breeds. They have a different colored background and um, really colorful, fun, bright letters. She had mentioned that these had just recently gone up for sale. I think they were pre-order at the time and I got it on Amazon. It was very reasonable. So that is it so far for our Baby Girls book collection. I, of course, am going to need some Dr. Seuss staples and some, you know, other classics, but I'm always up for suggestions on especially things that are kind of unique and um, are lesser known. There is a book. I'm officially putting this out there. I need your help. <laughs> there is a book that I want to buy and I should have bought but I was just trying to be good. I was just trying to not overspend. And I was like, oh, I'll just put that on my registry because I want to have enough books on my registry for my shower guests to purchase. But I also um, should have grabbed this one because I can't find it anywhere. It's nowhere to be found on the internet. I have scrubbed the internet and I feel like I'm very good at finding. It's not even that hard to find things online. But I feel like, I don't know. Okay, so it is called Peanut and Grape. I believe that's what it was called. And maybe that's why I'm having such a hard time finding it because I can't find the exact, I don't know the exact title, but I saw it at Target. I have not seen it since. My sister found it, she was looking at it. She almost bought it for her daughter and she decided not to and now we can't find it anywhere and I want this book so badly. And it's a drawing of a peanut and a grape and they're holding hands on the cover of the book. And it's a story about them. I don't really, I didn't even read it. I was like, oh, I'll find that later. It was only like six dollars too. I screwed up. So if any of you go to Target and you see peanut and grape, please buy it and I will pay you. I will pay to ship it. I don't care. I need that book. Um, or if you find a website where it is for sale, I've looked everywhere. I've, I've, I've looked. I don't know why I can't find this book anywhere. So um, if you can help me find peanut and grape, it better be as good as I remember it being <laughs> because I have spent way more time trying to find it than I think is even healthy. So, okay, that is it. My cats want dinner now, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.